So far, I've created eight videos on how to read a standard U.S. topographic map. In a couple of future videos, I'll combine those map skills with basic compass skills to introduce you to a complete navigation system. The first step in that system involves knowing exactly where north is. The tool that lets you do that is a compass. If you already know how to use a compass, please feel free to bail out now. If you never used a compass, or if you barely know how to use it, this video is for you. It's possible to buy a compass as cheap and small as this one. All it does is point very roughly north and remind you where the other key directions are. If you're lost, you can use it to travel without going in circles, but that's about it. The number one thing to remember about a compass like this is, it doesn't actually point north. This cheap lensatic compass is about the minimum any hiker should use. Its most important feature is a dial that rotates freely. It also has a sighting mechanism with a lens. As you point the compass to a landmark and keep that distant point in focus, you can peep through the lens with the same eye and keep your bearing in focus. So unlike the button compass I showed you previously, you can get an accurate bearing on some distant point. In the next video in the topo map series, I'll explain why hikers take bearings and how they do it. The big shortcoming of this compass is the same one I mentioned before. The north arrow doesn't actually point north. Why am I stressing this? If you've never used a compass before, you may think that compasses always point exactly north. If so, the difference between north and where your compass points could get you in serious trouble. So let's take a closer look at the difference and how you can correct for it. A free-floating magnetized needle doesn't magically point to Santa's workshop. Instead, it aligns itself with the Earth's magnetic field. On much of the Earth's surface, the lines of magnetic force generated by the planet are roughly north-south, so one end of a free-floating magnetized needle points roughly north. But the relationship between true north and magnetic north, as they're called, is only approximate. On this compass, which you'll see again and again in this video, the red and black needle is magnetized and has lined itself up with the local magnetic field. Notice how the compass needle isn't aligned with the edges of the compass. By the time you finish this video, you'll know why. By the way, always hold your compass flat so the needle floats freely. On a tilted compass, the needle can catch and give you a false reading. I mention this because it's a common mistake. Rotating compass dials work on the same principle. I remove the dial from the lensatic compass to show you how it works. The dial itself is a thin disc of aluminum, but a magnetized steel needle is attached to the back. As the steel needle swings on a pivot, it rotates the dial. The difference between true north and magnetic north is known as magnetic declination. That varies from place to place, and it also changes through time. This type of compass lets you set a correction for magnetic declination. The compass needle, the compass body, and the map are all properly aligned for a hike in central New Mexico. It's the compass I take every time I hike, and if you're looking for your first compass, I recommend that you buy a similar one. Remember, someday you may bet your life on your compass, so don't get the cheapest one you can find. Get a good one. A new one like mine is about 20 bucks US. The rectangle of clear plastic is called the base plate. The most important thing printed on the base plate is this arrow, known as the direction of travel arrow. Sitting on the base plate is a bezel with the compass needle inside. When the zero on the rotating bezel is lined up with the direction of travel arrow, and when the declination is properly set, the direction of travel arrow points north. Not more or less north, but exactly north. The first thing to remember about the bezel is that it rotates. The sole of a compass is the magnetic needle. On most U.S. compasses, when the needle is floating freely, there's a red end that points roughly north. I need to point out one more feature of my compass, the orienting arrow. This is the printed arrow inside the bezel. Let's look at this photo again using your new vocabulary. When the magnetic needle is aligned with a properly adjusted orienting arrow inside the bezel, and with the zero on the bezel aligned with the direction of travel arrow printed on the base plate. 
the direction of travel arrow points to true north. If all this went over your head, don't worry. I'm about to go over it in even more detail. So how do you know the magnetic declination for your hike? As is usually the case these days, you check online. I'll include a link for the U.S. in the description box. On this map, each of the red and blue lines extending east and west from the Mississippi represents one degree of declination. This map is from 2010 and it's slowly going out of date, but for hiking, it's still usable as of 2018. If you're hiking near the Mississippi, good news. By pure coincidence, along that river, the Earth's magnetic field causes a compass needle to point to the North Pole. In other words, you can get by without a correction. Sometimes beginners set the right amount of declination, but they set it in the wrong direction. If you're west of the Mississippi, the declination is set in the correct direction if your orienting arrow is pointing to the right of true north. In other words, the declination is properly set if the north end of the orienting arrow is skewed toward the Mississippi. In central New Mexico, I need a 9 degree correction. That's west of the Mississippi, so the orienting arrow needs to be skewed 9 degrees right of the rest of the compass. Here's my compass again. You can see that the orienting arrow is skewed 9 degrees right of the zero point on the bezel. The magnetic needle is pointing to magnetic north, but the rest of the compass is pointing to true north. The map underneath the compass is aligned with the direction of travel arrow, so at this moment the map is also aligned to true north. In Northern California, the correction is about 15 degrees. If you're hiking there, the skew in your orienting arrow should look like this. I'm holding the compass sideways, so at the moment the needle isn't pointing to anything. If you're east of the Mississippi, your declination is set in the correct direction if your orienting arrow is pointing left of true north. In other words, the declination is properly set if the north end of the orienting arrow is skewed toward the Mississippi. If you're paying attention, you just figured out that wherever you are in the continental U.S., your orienting arrow should be skewed toward the Big Muddy. In northern Vermont, the correction is about 15 degrees, just like in northern California, but in the opposite direction. In northern Vermont, the skew in your orienting arrow should look like this. Again, I'm holding the compass sideways, so the direction of the needle doesn't mean anything. A topo map should have the declination printed on it. Here, the declination is 11 and a half degrees. The 1997 date is important. The Earth's magnetic field wanders, so a declination from that long ago may not be accurate today. Your best bet for determining the current local declination is to check online. This little thing on my carry cord is the declination key, which I use to adjust my compass. The method for setting the declination varies from one compass to the next, so check the directions that come with the compass you buy. Previously, I mentioned one rookie mistake, not holding the compass flat. You can also get false readings from objects that alter the local magnetic field. That's caused by nearby magnets, of course, but also by large steel objects such as cars and wire fences. Small metal objects can also throw off your compass if they're close by. Even metals that can't be magnetized, such as copper and aluminum, can alter the magnetic field when they're carrying an electrical current. I've even had my compass thrown off by a large basalt deposit since that kind of rock is weakly magnetized. When using a compass, always step away from large metal objects and be careful what you hold next to the compass. This is a problem for electronic compasses, not just the old-fashioned kind. Using the information in this video and after a little practice, you should be able to determine exactly where north is at any time during your hike. Once you reach that point, finding the other key directions is almost automatic. As I said, I'll show you why this matters in a couple of future videos. This is a partial version of a compass rose. Lovely name, don't you think? Here you see the cardinal directions. Once your compass has you facing exactly north, take a quarter turn to the right and you're facing exactly east. 
Take another quarter turn and you're facing exactly south. Take one last quarter turn and you're facing exactly west. If you want to describe a direction that falls between two cardinal directions, you can refer to the intermediate directions. The name of each intermediate direction is based on the cardinal directions it falls between. Northeast is between north and east, for example. The other three intermediate directions are southeast, southwest, and northwest. Chances are you've used the cardinal and intermediate directions all your life without thinking about them. If you want to be even more precise, you can refer to directions between cardinal and intermediate directions. East-Northeast is, logically enough, between East and Northeast. If you memorize these 16 directions, you'll have a powerful vocabulary for describing your direction of travel. There's even a 32-point version of the compass rose, but to be honest, if all you remember immediately after this video is the 8-point version shown here, that's good enough. The reason is, when people want to get more precise these days, they don't rely on finer divisions of the compass rows. They instead rely on a system of degrees, just like in high school geometry. Let's take a last look at my compass. You can see that there are 90 degrees marked between north and east. Yep, your classic right angle of 90 degrees. From east to south, the bezel goes from 90 to 180 degrees. At west, we have 270 degrees. And back at north, 360 degrees is the same as zero degrees. When experienced hikers need to orient themselves or take a bearing, they can calculate that direction to the nearest degree. So yes, you really should have stayed awake in geometry class. And if you did stay awake in that class, you'll have noticed that while degrees in geometry usually progress counterclockwise, the degrees shown on the bezel progress clockwise. The compass rows and degree system are complementary. Here I'm showing the bezel degree values for the cardinal and intermediate directions. Now for my last bit of advice. You should avoid cheap compasses, but you don't need to spend a fortune. I used this Brunton professionally for many years, but with the leather carrying case, it weighs seven times as much as the base plate compass I featured in this video. Besides, a new version of this Brunton costs about 20 times as much as a good base plate compass. I needed the extra precision on the job, but I never took it hiking because the extra precision wouldn't make a difference on the hike. So, if someone tries to sell you a military-grade lensatic compass with tritium guide lights for 70 bucks or more, ask them to show you something cheaper. If you're new to hiking and haven't used a compass yet, go ahead and get one and practice with it. You'll need that new skill as you watch the next two videos in my topo map series. In those videos, you'll see how combining a topo map with a compass allows you to find your location and navigate across a landscape. Thank you.